guest Dr. Guillermo Maldonado says that 80% of people that have illnesses based on his experience are set free when demons are cast out of them. And as a matter of fact, a Jewish rabbi by the name of Jesus, a third of his ministry was casting demons out of people. Uh, Dr. Maldonado, the question that a lot of people ask is, how could a believer in Jesus that has Jesus living inside of them, their sins are forgiven, how could they possibly have a demon? Well, the believers can have anything they want, if we put it in that way. But if we give the theological answer behind it, the Bible says, do not give place to the enemy, knowing that we can open the door for the enemy. Legal right. That's what I call the legal right. And, but there, Sid, there's something important about deliverance, and I want people to know this. Uh, Jesus said, he said he was preaching, teaching, healing, and casting out demons. So if you saw those four, we see that 25% of his ministry was dedicated to deliverance ministry. So today we preach and teach, but we don't heal, neither cast out demons. So did you know that the kingdom of God, that's what the Bible calls the kingdom of, the, the gospel of the kingdom. If you remove the kingdom, you remove deliverance out of it. You remove the supernatural out of it. So we, what we have now is a gospel of conformism, not a gospel of the kingdom. So why? Because we have replaced counseling has replaced deliverance. And I do believe in counseling. I do, I do it as pastor sure. of 15,000 people in Miami. I do it. But what you, you want to deal with the root or you want to deal with the branches? If you want to deal with the branches, you will never be able to free the people. So answering you the question, 80% of the sickness, I, I minister, I've been in ministry of deliverance and in healing. As a matter of fact, the church is a result of it. There was a moment in the church, 200 people. I reached to 200 people and the church never grew. And the Lord said, the reason is not growing because you need to cleanse the leadership first. So I didn't understand what the Lord was saying mm -hmm. and answering you the question. Uh, he said, there's a difference between being demonized and being possessed. Possession has to do with ownership. Demonized means that there's an area in your life that is influenced by the enemy. It can be a generational curse. It can be something that for some reason you have given the devil a legal right to attack your body. And, and you may not even know the reason. I like to say to people that say a Christian can't have a, de a demon, I'll say, can a Christian be sick? And of course. So it's not a matter of possession, it's a matter of oppression, and you can get rid of it. That's the good news. But there have been two of the greatest revivals in modern day history, both happened in Latin America. And the thing that I find fascinating is they both understood deliverance. As a matter of fact, in one city, they actually started out by praying for drunk people. Tell me about yeah, that. This is a place called Almolonga, Guatemala. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, there was a pastor that went and prayed against the, the spiritual ruler of the city. And, and from that point, the, the Lord led him to do, led him to do that. After he prayed, the whole city became Christian. 400 drunkards, alcoholic, became Christian. They closed bars, they closed prisons. And, and, and because they understood deliverance. And, and today we have removed from the churches. And that's what the reason said, we can have people counseling people for hours and hours. If you don't know it, you're counseling demons. Because you're trying to try, you try, the medicine that you're applying is not the right medicine. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, speaking of medicine, yeah. have, have you read and seen, well, you're a pastor, you know, how many young kids are being drugged because of depression and it's getting younger and younger? And then you watch television and you see deviant lifestyles are acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, there's something rotten in this country that is literally causing people to be demonically possessed. It's as almost as if the devil is throwing his toughest and it's time for God to throw 
his strongest and let the real God win. <laughs> Amen. I believe and I agree completely with you. I believe the part of what had happened with the deliverance ministry in this country. You know, what had happened? Again, the replacement. But there's a solution for it. We can start. When most of the time, uh, Sid, we have replaced motivational preaching for the cross and the kingdom. Whenever you preach the kingdom from the right point of view of the scripture, you will see demons manifested. I've been in, I've been in 50 countries. In every country I've, I've been, I have seen people delivered from depression. And, and seeing what you're saying about depression, did you know that before the, uh, this fall, the, the economy, 10% of the population of America was in depression? Hmm. Now it's 20%, it's double. People are depressed, people that are watching me now. And, and you know what, it starts out in the natural, but then it becomes demonic because you, it's, it's like opening a door. Well, you know, I talked to someone recently that said to me, uh, my husband is involved in pornography and they will never be free. They'll have that problem their whole life. Untrue. Yes, Don't go away yes, yes. and we'll show you exactly yes. why. Yes. Here with Dr. Maldonado and you know people that are addicted to pornography. What happens if someone is addicted to pornography for 20 years? And you know what concerns me? That concerns me. But even worse, this leads to other things. Tell me about someone that was addicted to pornography and what happened. That's exactly what happened, Sid, what I was telling you. Before I, I entered, I had the revelation of the Minister of Deliverance. I had graduated at a doctor degree in one of the universities, Vision Universities, and they told me about many things about counseling and things. But the thing is, when I had this person in front of me crying out, saying, Pastor, can you pray for me? He said, I speak in tongues, I love Jesus, but I'm bound to pornography. Can you help me? And I'm trying to analyze things, you know, and, and suddenly start manifesting in front of me. So in that particular moment the Holy Spirit came upon me rebuked the spirit of pornography the spirit of pornography remember what Jesus said about the the woman with the uh, back condition Jesus didn't call it like today you know he called it like it is yeah he said bound by Satan 18 years the spirit of sickness yes the spirit of sickness. he called it like it is now we call sin issues you hmm. know we have to call it as it is so I said the spirit of pornography come out in that particular moment 20 years of pornography I mean bound in pornography it was completely set free in one second with the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word. There seems to be an increase in schizophrenia. Are, are you seeing this among the people? I you have know? seen hundreds of people being delivered. I'll just give you a case. A this, schizophrenia a schizophrenia, could be a demon? Schizophrenia, as, yes, schizophrenia oh. is a demon. Now, if you go to, from the psychiatrist's point of view, they will tell you it's unbalanced in the brain. And you need chemicals. All right. So you need <laughs> chemicals, the balance, whatever. So in my case, when I dealt with that, it's a spiritual. You cannot deal with spiritual things with emotional, mental things. We have to deal with the right medicine. So this girl, 14 years old, came into the church. They disability her because she, somehow they said, you're crazy. You're never going to drive. You're not going to go to school. And you're going to be in a mental hospital. She came. She was set free. Completely, she went back to college, graduated from college, normal drive, everything was free in a moment. Tell me about the Cuban witch. Uh, the Cuban witch uh, got one of my teachings, got to his hands, and, and somehow, you know, he started, you know, reading my, you know, hearing the teaching, and the moment he's, you know, he's hearing the teaching, something happened to him. He started being delivered. And after being delivered of, of witchcraft and santeria and witchcraft and all that, he was set free. He called all the witches, 50 witches, and prayed for them, and they were free. Mm. Uh, Dr. Maldonado, you teach on breaking curses, and the most wonderful things happen to people. Would you teach our people right now? I want you to mentor them so that they can be free like the people in your congregation. Right. First of all, they need to understand what is a curse. A curse is like a shadow, like something that you are ready to do something, but there's like a, an invisible hand that removed the blessing that, some, that God has for you. 
so is 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 is, is transfer from one generation to another generation. Yeah, give me some examples of curses. Uh, for example, for it can be uh, someone that if I got cases in, a, in our church where all the women in the family became single women. Hmm. For somehow they got divorced, and and the mother, the mother, and the grandmother. I have seen, for example, men that uh, three generation of alcoholism examples like that how do you break it first of all you need to understand that Jesus this is the the basic theology the doctrine of the, the knowledge behind it is that Jesus Christ took our our curses for us to receive his blessings Galatians 3:13 in other words we need to have a foundation where is the scripture that Jesus said he took your curse for you to receive the blessing so second you need to renounce to it if I want to teach you how to do it verbally you go to renounce specifically about that curse and number three you cast it out you command the spirit behind that curse to come out from you and you will see that taking place if you do it with faith I have seen hundreds of people doing it and being free why is it then when people go to other countries that are that speak and proclaim the gospel uh, hundreds of manifestations occur of people that have demons inside of them but in the United States uh, there's not a discussion you don't see demons being cast out you don't even see manifest in most congregations why is that uh, there's so many reasons Sid and one of the reasons is that that we as Americans we have so many options God is the third or fourth place. In other words, let me, I have the doctor and I have the hospitals. The psychologist. So, and psychologist. The so we got so many options. Whenever you have only one option is death of life, you're going to believe God. And, and I think, you know, this is the moment that many people that are watching now that they don't have many options. It's only God. Either they died. I have seen people. And, and number two, I believe, is the kind of preaching that we're preaching. Because with the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, it has to come healing. It has to come deliverance. It has to come deliverance from, from, from generational curses. But we've been preaching something else. We've been preaching another kind of gospel that doesn't bring that manifestation. I pray that you would become normal. Normal is defined by the Bible. I'm going to have Pastor Maldonado break curses over your life and pray by the Spirit over you. And I promise you, many of you that are bound to addictions, bound to pornography, bound to alcohol, bound to drugs, bound to sex outside of marriage, bound to deviant lifestyles, you're going to be free. You know why? You've just heard the truth and the truth will set you free. Don't go away. Hello, Sid Roth here with Dr. Mildenado, and many of you have had curses on your life. Some of you don't even know where it came from. It could have come from four generations back. I mean, there are people that every time it looks like you're gonna get ahead, uh, the car breaks down, bills pile up. Uh, there are people that are depressed all the time. Uh, there, there, there are people, there are so many different types of curses. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't have to just be alcoholism or drugs or pornography. Uh, there are many areas in the health area, in the marriage. Uh, it seems people, they get divorced and then they get married and then they get divorced again. And this is not the way God created it. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, I believe also rejection. There's so many people trying to... Uh, rejection uh, is the deepest wound, emotional wound in the people. And I have seen people always like someone looking from outside but not belonging, feeling that they don't belong. And and, you know, some people, they, they, because they were a want, a wanted pregnancy, even in the womb, that spirit of rejection yes. has hit them. So I believe there's a moment that Jesus Christ, let's give him the solution, Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter like, like Sid, you were saying about many people thinking, well, I have to, they are accustomed to it, they conform to it. It's become their friend. Yeah, and I tell you now, Jesus Christ set you free. He took your curses, your sickness, your rejection. He was rejected for you to be accepted in the beloved. 
And right now, I'm going to pray for you, if you're watching me, that you can receive that deliverance. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what, how oppressed on your mind, if you're depressed, if you're full of fear. There's so many people trying to go ahead, and they're, they're afraid. They're afraid to failure. They're fa afraid to many things. You, had, you dealt with rejection yourself. I did, and I, I dealt with fear. I was the most fearful person in the world, Sid. And the Lord set me free. I was afraid of my own shadow. Hmm. And now, when the Lord set me free, Sid, I can tell you now, I'm the boldest person in the world. When the Holy Spirit come upon me, I've, I've gone into funeral homes and pray for a dead person. D did you ever think that you would be able to speak in front of large groups? I never. I, I was so timid. I was so afraid. And, and the timid is one of the ways to go fear. You know, mm -hmm. and I was so afraid, but the Lord set me free. I can speak to you with authority, not only just the theology behind it, but I, I've experienced being free of rejection, being free of fear. So the same thing that happened to me, I can pray for you that happened to you. Would you do that? Yes. I want you to stretch your hands wherever you are now. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter if it's in your mind. Jesus Christ came and he forgave you for you to receive his uh, forgiveness. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise and I give you honor. Thank you for all those people that are watching. I want you to stretch your faith. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Maybe it's just a poverty thing. It Maybe it's just a, a marriage, broken marriages in your family. It doesn't matter what it is. Right now, Lord Jesus, I break every curse. And right now, every curse and, and the emotional and the uh, rejection, uh, sickness, diseases, poverty, uh, right now, uh, sin, I command every sickness and disease, I command every curse, go in Jesus' name. The, if you're watching me now and if you're confronting things like a pornography, if you're saying, Pastor, I feel like something has happened to me, I, I, I can't, I'm bound. Father, in Jesus' name, I command every spirit of, of pornography, come out. Come out. Come out of those people. Come out of their mind. Come out now. Any bondages, be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Depression. People with depression right now, the Lord is, is something lifted from you. Depression, go in Jesus' name. Rejection, go in Jesus' name. Any curse, I break it and I release the blessing of God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What are some of the open doors to the demonic? When people practice the occult, any kind of occult, uh, to, I would say, continue sin. You know, when you sin one time and you repent, a, a demon will not come and attack you. But if you continue practice sin, it will open a door for that. And number three, I will say uh, unforgiveness. When you unforgive, when you have unforgiveness in your heart, you giving the devil a legal right to attack your body or your spirit or your soul. How, how dangerous is it watching X-rated things on television or in the movies? Again, it is an open door. There's so many open doors that we can talk about, and th that that is one of them is X-rated movies. I have seen, for example, a girl that was watching uh, X-rated movies, and suddenly she was uh, oppressed by a demon, and we have to deliver her because she opened the door willingly into that demon, and, and that is very dangerous. And, and there's so many movies on witchcraft and, and, and magic and voodoo, and uh, all of these things are treated as normal today. Is that dangerous? Yeah, it's very dangerous. And Sid, the, the thing is, people are looking for an experience with the supernatural. Unfortunately, they can't find it in churches. Why is it that most churches in America, or in the world for that matter, don't even talk about this subject. Why? I can tell you many reasons also, but I think one of them is the, the kind of preaching that we are preaching. The Bible talks very clearly about the gospel of the kingdom. And this is what happens, Sid. Every time you saw Jesus preaching the gospel of the kingdom, you saw four things that could not stand in the presence of the kingdom. Number one, sin. Number two, sickness. Number three, demons. And number four, death. Those four things could not stand when Jesus preached in the kingdom. Matthew 4, 23, he preached the gospel of the kingdom, and then he cast out demons, and then he healed the sick, and then we're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Because everywhere, I've been in 50 countries of the world, and every place I've been, even in the States, I've seen tremendous deliverance in the States. One of the reasons the church, our church has grown so fast is because the ministry of deliverance. 
people coming up the livers. People are trying many things, many cures, but they're dealing with the branches. If you tell you I'm oppressed in my mind, I want to commit suicide, I got schizophrenia, they will give you a bunch of pills and you become addicted, but you're not dealing with the root. The root is the blood, the root is the power, the root is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And, and you know the most wonderful thing is when people finally get free in these areas, sickness can't even come near them. They get set free of sickness they've been dealing with their whole life. When these curses are broken, when these uh, open doors are closed, uh, are, what are you seeing in your church? Are you seeing many people healed when they get see, set free? Yes, because like we, when we started from the beginning, 80% of the, of the sickness on people is caused directly or indirectly by a demon. And when we, re, when we remove the root of the problem, you will see people come free. And there's something happened, Sid. I have seen, in, even in my own leadership in the beginning, I saw that something happened to my leadership. When I deliver them, they became so alive in God because demons will oppress your mind, will bring fears, and will let you go ahead in life. Well, it's time for you to go ahead of life. This is your moment. Yes. Some of you yes. say, I'm born again, but this is what the Bible says. This is eternal life, that you might know Him. Now you have to come to know Him. You know Him by repenting of your sins. Grace without repentance isn't even grace. But grace with repentance, belief that Jesus died for your sins, and belief that He is the Lord of your life and lives inside of you, that is coming to know Jesus.